Hi, this is Chris from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Well, I know. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't debate, debate as well as I used to. Joe, 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 Joe. He went on to say. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know. I know. I know right from wrong. <laughs> but I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. Oh, there's the money shot. There's the money line. Joe, 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 Joe. I was gonna, we're going to counter the mainstream media today. It's going to be the whole show. Just me saying, Joe, Joe, Joe. Okay. Where was that Joe on, on Thursday, though? Well, I, okay, Who's you know what? After? Don't start buzz killing me. Uh, who said... Just because Dumbledore was off his game doesn't mean you vote for Voldemort. Who said that? Nobody is saying they're going to vote Frangela. for Voldemort. Frangela said that, and she, they gave me life. On it's Friday. okay to vote for Joe Biden, but wish you had someone with more vitality. Oh my God, are you really going to yes, start I the am. week like this? All yes, right. I am. This is why we have General Russell Honore on. He uh, he gave such a great. It's what we need: a general to yell at us. <laughs> He gave just, he had some really great just tweets and threads. I can't remember which uh, about, you know, and it's interesting. Most of the Republicans are the ones that are like calm the down, right? The Michael Steeles and the Rick Wilsons and the, uh, you know, Stuart Stevens. I can't remember who else, but, you know, just saying calm down, take a second. He was fantastic in uh, North Carolina, as Jody and I said, we just saw him three weeks ago. He was fantastic, and he, was, he had a cold, and he you know? was good after the debate yes. too with people. He yes. was fine it, after I, the debate, and and we look like idiots if we say he had a great debate. Of course he, he didn't. didn't. We yeah, were, you know, among. And, and by the way, he said that the vice president said that. It's not like you know, Democrats are ridiculous spinners and liars like the Republicans. We didn't all go, oh, he was great. He won the debate. Of course not. It was a really terrible night, but you know. I, I just, uh, can I just say there's so many fine Americans give me life on Twitter? Hold, please. Amy Siskind, uh, yes, there was concern after the debate, but the New York Times, the bed. They were so ridiculously hysterical. I wish that newspaper would do some self-examination, but they never do. I mean, it feels to me where well, there's not just the crowd and... Bonnie and Clyde are having a little bit of a conflagra conflagration. conflagration. Thank you. <laughs> They have been adjudicated to have a conflict. They are adjudicated. <laughs> Conflagrators. Insurrectionists. And they're not posthumous either. No. <laughs> All right, listen, let's just so facto. celebrate what we what we can agree on, Mr. Buzzkill. Happy Steve Bannon goes to jail yeah. day, everyone. Woo-hoo! And Harry Lippman will join us for the Supreme Court We're gonna have some decision Supreme Court today. Decisions. Yeah, but the last ones of the session. In an hour. I, my sphincter may never unclench. Uh, okay, so we have General Honoré, we have uh, Harry Lippman, legal lad, and we have Rude Pundit, who is, oh, Rude Pundit also has been fantastic on the Twitters. Um, he just, uh, he said one thing you better get your head around if you believe Biden needs to step aside from the presidential race. Kamala Harris has to be the nominee yep. of the, or the Democratic Party will tear apart. If you're not on board with Harris, then you're living in a fantasy yep. world. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, Kimberly Johnson said, uh, hey, white men calling for another white man to replace Biden. Please share with us how ignoring the black female VP is a winning strategy for Democrats. You can't because your privilege is blinding you. And she also tweeted, Biden isn't dropping out. Find a new story. Um, as I said Friday, that is there's one mechanism that is his choice, and if that's what it is, then we get a thousand percent behind what's next. But I think it's it is like Gavin Newsom said uh, Thursday night. He's like, what kind of party does that? You don't like. Get, he's had our back forever. You don't like just go. Oh, he had a cold. I'm out. Right. I mean, I, where is uh who is who are we talking about? Which well, Lawrence O'Donnell. Oh, he's got to do New York. We have a. Soft yes for New York sexy liberal. He has got to come. He is just, yeah. Oh, you said you sent that entire uh, A block to your mom? Yes, I did. <laughs> the entire thing. To come, American, American icon, Carol Burnett. Yes.
National treasure. You're calming the national treasure. You're, thank you, Lawrence O'Donnell. <laughs> Come help me with these nervous Nelly bedwetters that surround me because... All right, Alan Lickman, mm -hmm. uh, who is, he's predicted pretty much every yeah, he's been right. race, yeah, correctly. Um, I just thought, again, a lot of, um, Heather Cox Richardson wrote a great piece, um, but let's, uh, 18, Chris, all right. Alan Lickman, professor All of, of these history. pundits and pollsters and analysts that you see on all the cable channels and all the networks have no track record in predicting elections, and yet they come on and they claim they know how this debate is going to affect the outcome of elections. They have no idea. It's sports talk radio. It may be entertaining, but it has no scientific basis. So what is the, what is the impact, do you think? Zero. Thank you. Debates are not predictive of outcomes. Hillary Clinton won all three debates, still lost. John Kerry won all the debates, still lost. Barack Obama got trounced, 72 to 20% in the poll worse than biden and went on to win thank you yeah and uh, by the way uh, fundraising is through the roof mm -hmm. um you know i i do i hope i'm feeling a bit of a circle the wagons and people going you new york times mm -hmm. you know you cnn mm -hmm. will decide oh by the way we have a uh, major announcement we have found our great this is perfect timing Perfect timing. We found our partner for Sexy Liberal oh. Save oh. the World Tour. Okay. Uh, grassroots Democratic Democrats HQ. Okay. Uh, GrassrootsDems.org. Uh, they are get out the vote. They are to. That's what they are all about. From the White House all the way down about uh, 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 electing Democrats. And you know what? That's who's going to decide this. Yeah. Not pundits. Not pundits. Not opinion columnists. Uh, the grassroots. Democrats. And so we met her. Uh, I met yes. her at Mark Hamill's house. And then we met her again, Tamara, at the uh, Biden fundraiser. Right. Uh, there's a reason. Everything happens for a reason. So we are uh, it will be, you know, sending out stuff as soon as we get. I think they've already started sending yep. stuff. But that is our one sexy liberal. Cause, you know, we've done Trevor Project and Planned Parenthood. And there's so many great causes and so many great groups. This one is got to be laser focused on, on getting out the vote on electing Democrats on uh, keeping our democracy period, right? Mm -hmm. Michelangelo Signorelli, uh, I just, there's people I trust, you know, Bob Seska, Kimberly Johnson, a lot of people on Twitter and threads that kind of, you know, because we all get scared. This is all fear-based. And I get the Kamala Harris stuff because she had, she does experience, I think, the, uh, you know, all of the misogyny that Hillary Clinton did and a lot of the racism that Obama did. And people are scared that like, oh, America won't elect, right, a black lady. And so, uh, but, you know, Michelangelo said, don't fall for the trap of Democrats. Listen to the New York Times and try to replace Biden. The New York Times will have a new narrative, Democrats in chaos. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have 347 yep. stories a week about how whoever is the candidate is all focused on how in, on inexperienced and uh, uh, unprepared that person is. If I have to read one more story, like Kamala Harris isn't popular, blah, yes, blah, she blah. she is. Yeah. She's um, a very good vice president. I think yeah. she is. I think uh, she Bob is. Seska. The call to arms. He said, okay, what are we doing here? Calling for Biden to step aside and subsequently influencing voters to support this idea, but without any numbers whatsoever indicating whether the alternative would fare better against Trump. Is it me or does this seem like a huge knee jerk blunder? Yes, Bob, thank you. Um, and the polling shows that out that, that none of nobody polls better than Biden. Right. Um, Michelangelo again, if the New York Times hadn't spent so much time beating up Biden, they might actually have credibility in making a suggestion, but now they're just a joke. Yep. Um, and this one I just loved. Andy tweeted, I went to work with a head cold once. Interesting enough, they didn't try to replace me. Because <laughs> <laughs> a cold, out. Okay, give me one more, uh, 19, uh, Alan Lichtman again. The problem right now is that the Democratic Party is considering replacing no, Biden, mostly because it's unclear whether or not he actually physically can carry out the rest of this campaign and, and put up a fight against his opponent. So that seems like a fundamentally different thing than some of the items that you have in your rubric. It's a huge mistake. They're not doctors. They don't know whether Biden is physically capable of carrying out a second term or not. Remember, a lot of folks were saying the same thing about Ronald Reagan, who was, you know, 73. And age was very different then. And they said, you know, he's not capable of carrying out another term. He won 49 states so this is all foolhardy nonsense yeah and one last one professor lickman the same pundits and pollsters who let us down the primrose path in 2016 are giving the democrats horrible 
advice. This proves what I've been saying for years. Republicans have no principles. Democrats have no spine. Republicans are sticking with a blatant liar who lied for every one minute and 20 seconds of that debate. Donald Trump put out a lie. And by the way, lies stick. Debate performances can be overcome. And now the wow. first sign of, of you know, adversity, the spineless Democrats want to throw under the bus their own incumbent president. My goodness. Yeah, thank you, Professor Lichtman. Mm -hmm. I can't get wait, yelled to get, wait to get yelled at by General Honoré. He's fantastic. He's a, he's a raging Cajun, you know. Hmm. Not James Carville. You know. No, James okay, Carville. Okay, what is going on I upstairs? Have no idea. What is happening? There's rioting happening in the house. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Tristan Snell, our legal lad, whom I love. Uh, Joe Biden had one subpar debate, and the New York Times calls for him to drop out. Donald Trump got convicted of 34 felonies, and the New York Times said nothing. Thank you. And one more, Bob Seska. B Biden has to step down. is the easiest thing to write. Now tell us the next 500 steps to victory, pundits. So far, no one has written that up. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to my heroes of, you know, Twitter, threads, YouTube, podcasts. I, if I have to hear Andrea Mitchell and Bob Woodward talk about <laughs> if Biden is too old, oh my God, Bob Woodward could have told us about what what do you call it? Trump said about COVID and kept a lot more of yep. us alive. And I just uh, this whole okay, I can't. Let me just uh, I don't, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. Uh, also, the Supreme Court stuff came down as we were on. And it's as horrible as we thought. The, the the Chevron decision, we'll talk to Harry Littman about all of it. But, I mean, I, while we're not looking, they're, like, gutting, right, the entire regulatory power. I mean, this was a giant power grab that we're just, while we're distracted by, oh, Joe Biden's too old. Should he step down? I mean, it, it, it's, this whole news cycle is just going to make me, it's going to make me, it's going to make me. Hey, well, what is it? Oh, like 45 minutes, we might get the immunity decision, everybody. Woo! It's not going to be full immunity. It won't. I don't. It I don't. Won't. I don't trust anybody or anything. if they if they actually rule on it today, it won't be full immunity. Ugh. Okay. They're sending it back down. I think. Ugh. Yeah, I agree. Yes, more more immunity is what they're giving Donald Trump. Yeah, but she can start having hearings. Yeah, that's true. We'll talk to Harry about that. Yeah, there. I, it's. Uh, it's way above my pay grade, all this stuff, but it could be like a mini trial or something that Judge Chutkin can go ahead with. Mm -hmm. um, Harry also writes a piece about how the, because the J6 ruling didn't look good either, but he said he not does not bad. think this is going to help Trump. We'll ask him why, but anyway. All right, so uh, lots to get to. Oh, and new Rocky Mountain Mikeness, which is very exciting. I to counteract all your, I just feel your negativity rolling toward me. I'm just going to, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm, 19 just, I'm just done with you insulting my intelligence. I have never insulted your intelligence. You, you, you were patricending to me on insulting. Friday about the homeless ruling. You're like, you don't know homelessness. Why? Because I live in a nice neighborhood. People live in the park right there. I walk every day to do errands. Everyone in L.A. deals with homelessness. I don't think it's the right idea to put them in prison. I don't think you're, I'm insulting your intelligence. No, you're but don't insulting. act like you're I'm like, oh, there. you don't know. You don't deal with homelessness. You're, you're sitting there for the first 15 minutes of the show insulting my intelligence. I am not. I'm, I'm going to keep quiet I the disagree. rest of the show. I Stephanie. disagree with you on certain rulings. I never insulted your intelligence. <sighs> it's going to be one of those days. Jody, I feel you. I feel your stare. I understand. I'm looking at you on this monitor. Huh. At no, you. Both of you are insulting my intelligence. I, so. We are not. That's we have never insulted your intelligence. Oh. We disagree on that particular ruling. We agree on that. We're not talking about the rulings that came down on Friday, Stephanie. You were off air. Okay. We'll get to this out. We're not talking off about air, that. You, you You've said, sat here for the first 15 minutes of the show insulting my intelligence, saying that I was swayed by the New York Times I'm talking article. about how I feel about it. I'm reading people that I agree with. I'm I'm making my case. So you make your case. You know, we. I, this is my show. The it is opening, your show. So the I'm opening sit segment here is... And shut up for the rest of the show. I'm not asking you to shut up. I'm going to, though. Okay. You are invited to Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Save the World Tour. It's the political comedy event of the year, and it's coming to a city near you. Join Stephanie Miller, the queen of progressive talk radio, along with Hal Sparks, John Fugelsang, and the comedy duo Frangela, mocking all the fascists and trolls for a tour that is hilarious, inspiring, and deeply offensive to just the right people. It's an all-new tour with all-new guests and a side-splitting evening of stand-up. Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Save the World Tour. 